T-minus five, four, three, two, one. Booster ignition. And, and uh, there in May, we saw first time how 48 degrees Celsius will be there and uh, outside the outside temperature. And then midday we conducted the uh, uh, yeah, new test and that made India a nuclear weapon state. And uh, that also gave me another type of happiness. Then I said, okay, these are all some different, some space. I said, we prepare for the nation. I prepare for the nation, India 2020 vision. How by the year 2020, India can be an economically developed nation. We give a blueprint, a roadmap in 1998 uh, with a complete uh, area specified and what should be done. And uh, this book, uh, finally a book also come in India, 22 is famous book. And all these six, uh, another work, yeah, and including parliament discuss and politically they accepted in those days. So all this is happened. But uh, she was nothing impressed my student. <laughs> you know student, when you are taking class, you will know. She said, I didn't ask all this thing, but you give me one thing which gave you bliss anand, you know, bliss means anand, equal at this anand. Now, finally, I told her, see, when I was in DRDL Hyderabad, I was working as a director of the establishment and also my specialization in composite material, how to make a composite material. The Agni missile, the introduction I gave for Agni uh, carry a, what is called a heat shield because when it re-enters with 15 times the sound speed, re-entry time before 2000 km goes, the temperature outside will be normally 4500 degree Kelvin. It will be burning, it's a flame. That means inside, inside the nose cone, inside the heat shield, the material what you carry, it may be any important material, and uh, that should be in temperature, the room temperature, what you are having. This is the requirement. So, if we, we developed a material, what is called carbon-carbon material. So, you know carbon composite. This carbon-carbon material, we developed it at the tip we have put this fellow, so that whenever temperature, very high temperature flame comes in, this will protect the inside, will be always 25, 28 degrees Celsius. So this is a very light material we used. So this is uh, this is called heat shield for agony. One day, an orthopedic friend, uh, Professor uh, Professor B. N. Prasad, at that time he was in Nizam of Medical Science. He is an orthopedic surgeon. Orthopedic surgeon. One day, he was visiting me. Orthopedic surgeon was visiting my lab. I showed him the precious in the heat shield, she lifted, he found it's very light, very light, very light. He was always saying very light and then and heavy. Strength also, you see, very high, high temperature, strength also very low. So strength will be kept always. So all these things was highly impressed. He said, Kalam, I want to take you to my orthopedic ward in New Zealand of Medical Science. So he put me in his car, uh, took me to the hospital and uh, took me to the orthopedic ward where 30 40 people who are having knee surgery and about 15 young boys and girls they had a, the caliper fitted you know for a polio patient they fit the caliper that caliper each both caliper put together weighs four kilogram he told me See that as soon as we went, they were removed that caliper, they did not wear it. As soon as we saw the doctor, immediately started fitting it. So, so heavy, it's not so uncomfortable. He told me, you see the scene, and you have got a fantastic material. What the use of missile? Why not you use that material, missile material? Use it for this, uh, my, uh, my children. So, we took it as a challenge. Uh, we took dimension. We take 22 molds we made in two weeks time, three weeks time and then uh, we got uh, 15, 15 um, calipers 
and we call it FRO, flow reaction orthosis, FRO. And uh, I took it to the hospital with my team, composite team, and we fitted to each uh, child. And a child, when they were so light, they started running. Because that 4 kilogram becomes 400 gram. 4 kilogram, 400 gram. The children were so happy and uh, they started running. When the, when the mother saw this one, they thought, I saw the tears. I said, that was the bliss I got, I told <laughs> So my, uh, all of you, my feeling is that answer says my student, eh? all of you are fortunate to be in a noble profession to remove the pain with compassion and experience, very important. See one is treatment, another is compassion. Uh, both uh, uh, today I was uh, in Trivalur at a school. I, one girl asked me now question, but 12 questions were there. Uh, one question she asked. Before her question I answered, he asked, what class you are studying? The girl said, I am 10 plus 1. What subject you have taken? She said, medical subject she has taken. That is biology, medical science, and physics, physics bioscience. All these things she has taken. And I hope you are becoming a doctor. I said, yes, I, I, my dream is to become a doctor so that I can remove the pain, she said. Fantastic statement the girl made. I want to remove the pain. But you know, I said, my answer was, you know, normally we all of us, human beings, we have one biological heart, isn't it? Always you and me, all of us got one biological heart. But doctors should have two hearts, I said. <laughs> Apart from biological heart, they must have one more heart. So the question of, I asked, what is the second heart? <laughs> you know, buddy, you will get it. Finally, I said, it's a kind heart. Because doctor service, medical service needs compassion to the patient. Because you find not one patient you have to treat hundreds of patients with pain. In that environment, you have need kindness and compassion. So I visualize all the doctors. They've got two hearts. Good doctors. <laughs> now, medical profession, one of the important things, friends, when I see Dr. Sanjeev's life, Dr. Ramurthy's life and all your life. I see one great quality we need, what is called culture of excellence. Culture of excellence. All of you can hear me? Yes. Last row? Yes. Now, friends, you will belong to the medical community of multiple fields. You should stand for a culture of excellence. The excellence not by accident. It is a process where an individual continuously strives to better oneself. The performance standards are set by themselves. They work on their dreams with focus and are prepared to take calculated risk and do not get deterred by failures as they move towards their dreams. Then they step up their dreams as they tend to reach the original targets, they strive to work to their potential. In the process, they increase their performance, thereby multiplying further their potential. This is an unending life cycle phenomena, culture of excellence. They are not in competition with anyone else but themselves. That is a culture of excellence. I am sure each one of you will aspire to become a unique with culture of excellence because that is needed when you see a patient and the diagnosis method has changed and the treatment methods have changed and you are the one area you have to be completely updated continuously 
that means uh, your knowledge should continuously needs needs uh, needs addition 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 friends medicine when i am seeing all of you medicine and is undergoing a paradigm shift the understanding of genome the dynamics of proteins and the ability of technology to see various process of the cells have zeroed on to inflammation inflammation as the root of all the diseases you will agree now with these discoveries also came a scientific advances in understanding the underlying mechanisms of disease leading to innovative therapies that focus on addressing the cause of disease instead of just treating symptoms it is essential our medical scientists and clinicians working in the field of healthcare and research have to revisit traditional pharmacological approaches uh, to medicine and healthcare and develop scientific treatment protocols to use them for many acute and chronic disease and disorders now when i am telling you in 2013 that is last year a cancer research found a sea change in research and development because i visited the andres laboratory in usa according to the science journal is called the advanced of science as aas promising results emerge from the clinical trials of cancer immunotherapy cancer immunotherapy in which treatment target the body's immune system rather than tumors directly tumor follow you know in cancer you will treat something it will come somewhere else okay so the so there is, the question is the 2013 research says the immune system targets the body's immune system in, in which rather than the tumors directly the treatment push t cells and other immune cells to combat cancer so far this process works only for certain cancer and few patients it is considered to be an important scientific breakthrough though the ultimate impact on the disease not known it was reported the results so far have been highlighting its success it is possible immunotherapy in future may may find solution for many other diseases only person i can ask and ama whether it's possible but <laughs> i was there a few weeks back at the edinburgh university i i saw something i thought sharing to the young doctors professor chandran in one of the laboratory showed his work on deploying technologies typically used for for eye care professionals and use it to develop to detect neurology disorders uh, let me read it professor chandran he is from edinburgh university a laboratory i visited cancer laboratory showed his work on deploying technologies typically used by eye care professionals and use it to help detect neural disorders using optical scanner devices his team is mapping the inside of the eye particular retina they are going further and targeting the optical nerve a small opening into the retina which carries neurons and photoreceptors from the eye to the brain using the advanced technology they are able, they are able to peep down the optical nerves in the specific region of the brain and make a longitudinal and cross section image of it he showed me a number of images these images clearly show any odd neural pattern or any potentially at risk neural form thus using this technology professor chandran and his team is able to direct early disorders and administer preventive care in the, in the in the typical area now friends i would like to say that uh, uh, six virtues of medical care one we have to possess over the medical care let me now share with you six virtues which a medical care giver should possess 
This uh, I have read in a book titled Medicine and Compassion, authored by Ripochi, a monk, Buddhist monk, Ripochi, co-authored by uh, David Arshim, MD. It's a nice book. Name of the book, Compassion and Medical Care. The, he's, according to the others, first virtue generosity. That is, the doctor should have a mind of generosity. Second virtue is pure ethics. Because uh, just now I had a specialist in ethics area is here. Ethics area. And uh, that's I am very happy to know. May I know, sir, who is that, sir, who is special, special medical, medical ethics? Eh? Eh? Dr. Hegde. P.M. Hegde. Okay, so, first virtue is generosity. The second virtue is pure ethics. Third is tolerance. Because you will be in the midst of pain. They are doctor or nurses. They always, they are in the midst of pain. That's why tolerance. The fourth is perseverance. Doctor never gives up. Never gives up. He will always say, I can save this situation or say, prevent the disease or cure the disease. Fifth is cultivating pure concentration. When you see a patient, he should feel my doctor sees me. Sees me through. Not just uh, keep a thermoscope and get away. And the way you treat the patient, he feels in this, uh, the cultivating the pure concentration of the patient. The last virtue is intelligent. That means no uh, field in the country, in the any part of the world, it needs updating. Because medical field in equipment, in diagnosis, in treatment, continuously every day is changing. Fortunately, internet is there. These virtues will empower the caregivers with a humane heart. I am sure the medical who are present here and elsewhere will have all these six virtues that will reinforce confidence of the citizen in the healthcare system. So finally, in conclusion, I would like to say what I will be remembered for. What I will be remembered for. Okay. First, friends, I want to leave you with a thought today. What is the one action which will make you great? Every one of you has a page in the history of the world. What is that page? How do you make that page which is going to be referred by the prosperity? There is a need to give a vision to your ambition. What I will be remembered for? What I will be? Each one of us has to ask the question. What I will be remembered for? And uh, if you find an answer uh, for this question, a few lines, that that of that of out of box idea will drive you for the rest of your life. You will definitely thinking something different on our out of box mission. What are they? Can I visualize along with you? I am not a doctor, but I want to visualize along with you. Each one of you will derive your own vision to remember. For example, you see this light. When you see this light, immediately we remember a personality. Even though electricity was discovered Faraday long, long ago, but the application was given a person, Thomas Alva Edison. When the light, you see Thomas Alva Edison. When the telephone bell rings, you remember Alexander Graham Bell. So, what a lady who got two Nobel Prizes, you will remember it's Madame Curie because one for discovery of radium, another she treated cancer patient using the radium. For both she got two Nobel Prizes. So, they are all unique people. So, what I will be remembered for, you will be definitely thinking something different and out of box mission today, what are they? You are going to say today what I will be remembered for. Can I visualize along with each one of you will derive your own vision. I am not uh, putting boundary condition. Will you be remembered for bringing smiles of health and joy to all the patients? 
when the patient reaches you you will be having haunted by patients but smile can you wear the smiles will you be remembered for helping creating a unique cost effective vaccine against malaria malaria is not going out of our country and thereby saving more than 1 million people mostly children and uh, who are in trouble will you be remembered for creating a road map for reviving the 23000 primary health care centers across the nation which would enable them to deliver the much needed primary health facilities to a remote region madras doctors want to be in madras nobody want to go to the primary health centers will you be remembered as a champion of preventive this is very important sir will you be remembered as a champion of a preventive health care in the areas of cardiology diabetic and infectious diseases because you would be the great teacher you are treating a patient patient doesn't come alone he comes with his family and when the patient get cured he become a teacher when you teach when you tell him how to how he got the disease how it can be prevented he will give you attention to you he will care for you will you be remembered as a great teacher in preventive care for disease in families of patients will you be remembered for contributing in a unique way in finding a cure for diseases such as cancer and hiv now friends my best wishes to all of you for success in your mission of removing the pain of the needy patient may god bless you all